everyone. Hi, everybody. Hello. I hope you're having a really good time. We're just waiting for many more students to join us. I hope you know why we're here. We are here in our studio. We're all safe. I hope you're safe as well. And we have a friend who will help us through sharing all the content that we have with you today. All right. His name is Jaisima. Ah. All good? Yes. So, shall we get with it? Yes. Well, as you know from the title and all the promotions that we've done earlier, we are here to discuss with you the, sci uh, the science mock exam <laughs> analysis, right? Hey, did you take that exam that we had conducted? Yeah, the registrations were open till the 15th, right? Yeah. And, uh, the the exam was there on 19th of October. I hope you took that exam, right? So it's okay even if you didn't take the exam, actually. The next one that comes up, make sure that you register, make sure that you take the exam so that you can get detailed analyses. But now, in the description below, you've got the link of the actual PDF paper that is going to be available for seven whole days. Download it, play around with it, do as many questions as you want. We're going to solve some of them here today. Yes. And all this, mind you, is for your term one examinations, right? right. Which, of course, we have the date sheets, right? It'll be starting in the month of no November, right? We're just there. We have social science first, then of course on 2nd of December we have science. So of course then we have maths and of course we have English. So get ready for all of it. We are here for science, like we three. Yeah, that's that's yeah. why there's three, yeah. three of us here. Three of us here because we are going to be discussing some of the questions that we had in the mock exam. Uh, I know you download the PDF, you'll have to take the same ones, but you can test yourself in subjects. Chemistry and bio and, and then physics. We will see you a little after. I think yeah, I'm going Ashish to sir is going to start out with chemistry. Yes. Yeah. See you both. Bye bye. All right. Uh, hey, oh, oh, wait. wait. Yeah. <laughs> you might need that. I do need that. Then yeah, he disappeared. All right. Thank you. So uh, wow, I, I have a lot of people saying they love science. That's awesome. My exam is completed, sir. Class nine. Oh, ah, biggest fan of Ashwin, sir. Yes. Baiju's path student is saying that. So did somebody recognize you? Aman Mishra also recognized you. That's awesome. Has he basically released admit card? Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Oh, thank you. Okay, Ankita, everyone is like showing us so much love. That's great. Yeah, we'll start the session also. I just wanted to go over the comments. They're just, you know, running right here. Okay, anyway, let's start with chemistry. What do we have in store for you? Look, what we're going to do is just solve a few of these questions. Okay, four or five of them. The ones that we think are nice. And I, some of the students, a lot of students found these questions be a little bit hard for whatever reason, right? And to show you this idea of how hard a question is, right? There's this thing on top over here. You see that these two bars are filled up. So according to us, this was a kind of a doable question. That's what this bar is, okay? Anyway, let me read the question out for you. Somebody, they, they really want you back, Ashwin. Yeah, we, Ashwin's going to be doing physics in some time. <laughs> Hold on. So the first question, okay? It reads out, consider the following reaction. HNO3 AQ aqueous plus NaOH gives you NaNO3 and H2O. And, oh, this is an interesting question. The given reaction is an example of four of these and you have to pick two, yeah? Is it decomposition, combination, double displacement or neutralization? Interesting thing is that the answer has at least two of them correct. Okay, wow, there's so many people giving me answers already. Let's see if you're right. <laughs> yeah, I know everyone's saying C and there's a bad pun there. Anyway, this was question number three on the PDF. Download it, check it out. See, you're also, this is an easy question, exactly. Yeah, we're starting off easy. Good, good, good. Everyone's got C as the right answer. Let's see if that's correct or not. But okay, for those of us who are not live and viewing this maybe after an hour or after even a year, let me just go ahead and solve this anyway. Okay. So the underlying concept is that this uses the different types of chemical reactions. Okay. Let's identify what's happening here. Okay. Two reactants giving you two products. And this is an acid base reaction. You need to know these two points to solve it. Z, someone said Z or Z. Okay. Great. That's great. That's a nice option. We maybe will put that in next time. Uh, so, okay. What is a decomposition reaction? Quickly go over this. Single reactant giving you two or more products, right? I don't think that's what's happening here. You have clearly two reactants, two products. Quickly go on with this. So we're going to mark that as a nice red there. That's not happening. Combination is two or more reactants giving you one product. <laughs> not it, right? Definitely not it. Okay. So you've got two reactants, two products. Cross this out as well. Double displacement. Okay. We love Baiju's classes. I see fresh mind saying that. That's awesome. Uh, somebody likes biology. Akriti likes biology. And so it's acid-based reaction. Most of them are decomposition reaction. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. That's interesting. Shruti is saying that, sir, it is an acid-based reaction and most of them are decomposition reaction. 
that's a tell me more I didn't, I didn't follow that but anyway let's let me just go ahead and explain what this double displacement thing is here yeah we've got a nice block diagram for you it's just exchanging of ions okay so a and d here combined to give you this and b and c combined this way over here okay i think and i think that this one's right okay look at this carefully you got hno3 plus NaOH giving you nano3 and water if you look carefully it's the nitrate ion that combines with the nit with the sodium ion and gives you nano3 if you're wondering what this AQ is, S is basically a solid, AQ is aqueous and H2 is water. Okay. And I know this is, if it's not evident to you right away, H and OH, they combine to give you water. Okay. Sometimes they miss out on this. And this is an extremely important part because for us to figure out what the next, whether the next part is true or not. Number four. Number three is right. Double decomposition. The reason I'm completely rushing through this is because everyone has already got the right answer. But yeah, okay, so is this a neutralization reaction? Yes, it definitely is. Acid and base give you salt and water, and that's what I was talking about. You need to identify that OH and H. Okay, I'm not writing down the ions, but that's what it is. You get this, and they combine to give you water. Okay, once you do that, there you go. Three and four must be correct, which is option C, which everybody got right, was awesome. Hey, can you just scroll down in the comments, go to the end? Uh, just some idea, please. Thanks, just write at the end. I just want to see the latest one. Crystal clear, that's great. Fresh mind, Ritesh is also saying yes. Once I hold on, double display reactions are precipitation reactions. Wow, there's so much theory going on. You guys are teaching that. That's awesome. Okay, that's great. Where is the PDF? Hey, guys, just check out the description. Yeah, just uh, expand it. If you're on a mobile device, I think you can expand the thing and there you'll see like a lot of links. Just, just look at that. Yeah, there's a PDF is right over there. Okay, uh, cool. It's a V-transfer. It's what? It's a V-transfer link. Oh, yeah, it's a V-transfer link. So you open it and it'll get it down from there. You, you, you know, it'll go to another link and you'll be able to download it. Okay. Baju's helped you a lot, Dhawal, to score very good marks in your pre-boards. You're most welcome. I'm, that's really nice. It makes our day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's go to the next question. And you'll see that the difficulty has kind of increased. You see the number of bars over there from 2 to 20 to 4. Why is it? Why do you think that we think that is a difficult question? Let's go over this. <clears throat> Alex has two solutions, X and Y. He added a few drops of turmeric water, Haldi. In solution X and observe that it turns yellow in color. I'm just highlighting the important things here. On adding turmeric water to solution Y, he observed that the solution turns red. Okay, All right. Now from these options, we have to identify that, you know, which of the solutions match Alex's experiment. I've read the question out a little quickly. I see no answers all so far, so which means you want me to solve this question. Okay, that's good. So what's happening over here? Why does turmeric change color? Why does it not change color? What's the idea? The biggest hint is, you know, if you've studied this in theory, turmeric, it turns red in soap solution. What does that mean? Okay, I see answers now. B and D, that's good, that's good. That's good. Keep, keep the answers coming. Why does turmeric turn red in soap solution? It's because soap is basic. How is soap basic? I'm just going to quickly talk about that. Maybe don't go into too much detail. Soap is, is just, a, you know, when you have a strong base, let me just quickly write that, that reacts with a weak acid that is what a soap base is okay which is why the overall solution is basic now when you put turmeric in a basic solution it turns red that's the main thing you have to take away from what i've said so far okay someone's smiling laughing because of methyl orange what um i've got the orange marker here but i don't think methyl orange is doing anything right now yeah okay correct answer is d everyone's saying d okay great so you figure it out excellent now but hey, it's good you figured it out. There's one small thing here that you need to keep in mind. Okay, this is an excellent question. When I put it in X, I'm just drawing what's happening here. I'm just, you know, in a, in a diagrammatic way. Acidic or neutral. It could be acidic or neutral if it becomes yellow. Important thing to note over here. Luckily, the examiners over here have not tested the fact that it could be a neutral solution also. But I'm just giving you a hint that's important as well. That it could be acidic or neutral. Anyway, if it turns blue, that means that this is a basic solution. Right? So far, so good. So X is either acidic or neutral and Y is basic. But I have all kind of weird salts, right? What is the correct option? Oh, wow. This is a beautiful poll. 40% of you are saying it's D. 31% are saying B. And 18% are saying C. Thank you so much for the poll. 122 of you voted. Thank you so much for that. A lot of you are typing out D, but the polls, that's the real answer. Can you just scroll up? I want to see the poll once again. Can you just scroll up? Yeah, just keep that there. So you have some sort of a confusion. That's great. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll solve that confusion is what I mean. It's great because, you know, you're going to listen. So that's awesome. Okay. So all the salts that are given to you could be acidic or basic or neutral. That is the key takeaway from this question. 
How do I get an acidic salt? As I told you, soap was a basic salt. Similarly, an acidic salt you get when you take a strong acid and mix it with a weak base. Just a little bit of theory, quickly. Basic salt, just like soap. Strong base, weak acid. And lastly, neutral salt, LCL, NaOH. Strong acid, strong base, neutral salt, NaCl, and water. Simple, right? Okay. Now, this may look scary, but it's really not okay. We just, now see, a lot of you are saying B now. What is suspicious, Mr. Ritun Jain? Nice YouTube logo there. Uh, hi, good evening. I don't know who's saying that, but great. Sabrish. Oh my God. You're down with the bands again. Can you guys please stop talking about, stop talking about bands, man? That too, that's not a good band. I'm saying that again. Okay. Anyway, so on the screen right now, NH4Cl, where does it come from? What is the origin of NH4Cl? It's got a strong acid HCl and a weak base NH4OH, which means the nature of the salt is going to be acidic. Why? Because the strong parts are what, you know, kind of, they don't dominate. You see this table? You basically have to know this information, okay? If you know this information, this question is easy. If it's not, it's a little difficult. That's why I said that, okay, that's one part of, one, one of the story. So let me quickly populate this, yeah. Strong and weak again, so this is acidic. This is strong and strong, so this is neutral. Here it's strong and strong, so again neutral. And last one is weak and strong, which is basic. H2S, H2CO3, the same thing, you know, carbonic acid that's there in your uh, cold drinks, your aerated drinks. Anyway, it is a strong base. We have done this exercise, but again, this is half of the story. What's the other half? Look at this. X, remember, could be acidic or neutral. Yeah, somebody is asking this question. I have, to, I have to take this question. It's a very important question. CBSC is going to, yeah, it's going to focus on NCRT. See, my suggestion, I mean, see, that I'll, I'll read out the question. It's saying, sir, CBSC gives questions from NCRT book or it can give questions from outside also. Sawal mat poochho, yaar. Pad lo. Attend our classes, you'll do well. Okay. Attend all of this, you'll do well. And study from NCRT, you'll do well. Thoda sa application poochho lenge, toh kya guna hai? Kar lo. It's fine. Focus on the basics. And, you know, the questions and all will happen on their own. Don't worry about it. If you're expecting the same thing that, ha, humko poochha 2 plus 2 equal to 4 exam, maybe 2 plus 2 equal to 4 hi poochha hai. No, yaar, then what's the point? <laughs> okay. Thoda sa application hoga. And, but it's all going to be based on the NCRT book itself. Aqua Regia. Why? Why, why do you want to talk about Aqua Regia? Who's asking this? Okay, Ritesh, but no, I'm not going to talk about Aqua Regia. Sorry. I, I read your comment, but yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Are game khelna chodo Manu Singh. Padho. <laughs> cool. Uh, see, this is back to this question. You got X is going to be either acidic or neutral. Y is definitely basic. Yeah. Why? Because X, the, the yellow color stay as is. And why the color change to red, right? Now, we've solved the question. I know we spent some time, but I think we're done now. We just have to get back to what was happening here, okay? Clearly, it is NH4Cl is the only one that fits because out of these options, look here carefully. It's going to be either option A or D that could be correct if you're looking only at NH4Cl or K2SO4 and NaCl. Yeah, only this or this could work, right? But MgNO3 is also acidic, which is why this goes out of the way and Na2CO3 fits. Hence, this is the answer. So yeah, a lot of you are saying D from the starting. Anita is still saying C. I hope it's clear. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Jayant, Raval Jayant, your favorite your YouTube channel now. That's good to know. That's great. Hey, yaar, mass is in kal hua tha. Parth, go check our YouTube thing, man. Uh, CSSD is happening soon. Look at the thing. Hey, just scroll up. No, Jayant, uh, Jessam, I just missed a few comments. Just scroll up a little bit. Nah, ha, wait. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, the math session happened yesterday. SST is happening. Just check out the community post. It has the link of all the sessions and the dates and all that. And uh, what happens? Oh, excellent questions. Shrishti uh, swa, swa, Swagatika. I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly. Shrishti, what happens if you react to weak acid in a weak base? <laughs> Anything could happen. That's, that's the right answer, you know. It depends on a lot of factors that you'll study in 11th grade, but you could get an acidic salt or a basic salt. Amazing question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, I was hoping someone would. Okay, next question. You'll see the bar fill up. Okay, it's filled up to twice. And this is a kind of question that a lot of you really like. Assertion reason. You keep asking, Sir, do more assertion reason questions. So here, anyway. I think this is very doable. This is question number 30 or 32 on the PDF. Check it out if you want. Download it. Do you find these questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please vote. There's a there's a, there's a a poll there. Do you find these questions useful? Okay, neutralization. Sir, you will conduct. Okay. Hey, hey. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yogi, thank you for your input. Uh, thanks for the feedback. We will we, we, we'll, we'll try this out for sure. Okay. Uh, melodic period table. I have no idea what a melodic period table is. I'm going to have to Google that as well. Okay. Assertion. The gas produced during the reaction of sodium carbonate with hydrochloric acid when passed through lime water turns lime water milky. Some gas is being produced. Is a reaction happening for sure? Focus on this, guys. Okay. Answer there. B or C. Someone saying B. Someone saying C. 
अच्छी बात है ए ओके नाइस स्प्रेड नो वन सेइंग डी दैट्स ग्रेट एवरीवन सेइंग ए बी एंड सी इज इट पॉसिबल टू दैट पोल अगेन की यू नो व्हाट्स द राइट आंसर एटसेट्रा गिव मी डू दैट गेट गेट दैट इफ दैट पॉसिबल वी विल डू दैट अदरवाइज आई आई सी दैट लॉट्स ऑफ एज बी एंड बी एंड सी एनीवे सो गैस इज प्रोड्यूस्ड ड्यूरिंग रिएक्शन ऑफ सोडियम कार्बोनेट विद हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड सो देयर इज एन एसिड एंड देयर इज अ बेस दैट आर रिएक्टिंग ओके रीजन इज the carbon dioxide reacts with lime water to form calcium hydrogen carbonate which forms a white precipitate it seems like an easy question that you should get right away but there's a small trick to it which is why there's like a you know you see that on the top top corner there it's it's got four bars not two there's a reason behind that we'll talk about this the underlying concept is simple the you know reaction of acids specifically hcl over here and here you're talking about metal carbonates specifically metal carbonate produces carbon dioxide so Assertion is correct. Reason is correct. Answer is correct. No, wait. <laughs> Look at this beautiful animation. Something happened and it went too quickly. So I'm just going to play that one more time. Hold on. Let's play that again. Okay. So I am pouring the liquid over here. Okay, and see that both of these are mixing and something, some gas comes out. And slowly, if you see over here, it becomes milky. Now this was lime water and became milky. Sure. So the assertion looks like it's correct. We'll talk about the equation as well. This is just to show you what the animation looks like. Sodium carbonate is already there. I'm pouring HCl on top of it. What is happening? Basically, I'm forming CO2 gas. Okay, CO2 gas and makes go goes and and makes lime water milky. If you're wondering what lime water is, what is the formula and all of that, don't worry. We have that. Let's look at the reasoning and when we look at the okay. Now someone is saying A. uh what are you guys saying a lot of you are seeing seeing c c is correct because gas produces h square h2 i think you want to say sabrish h2 nahi yaar h2 where h2 going to get formed how will h2 get formed can you clear je while preparing for online are yes goa gamers yeah great that you game maybe you'll have to cut down a bit but yeah you can definitely clear je with uh, with the help of byju yeah we have an entire channel for that to help you with that slick lime lime water achhi baat hai nice question uh see Lime water is colorless initially. What is lime water, right? You put CO2 in it, becomes lime milky. Don't worry, we're giving you the actual equation. CaOH whole twice is lime water. No spaces, okay? Lime water. This is just one word. Other one, nimbu pani. Don't put the space there. I've said this before also. I don't want you to, you know, lose marks because of putting the space thing uh, because you missed out the space. Okay, cool. So this gives you a white precipitate, which is CaCO3. That is what is that's what our session is saying. But the reason is calcium hydrogen carbonate be careful here obviously it is not calcium hydrogen carbonate but the trick here is that if i keep adding more and more carbon dioxide then i do get calcium hydrogen carbonate okay which is cahco3 whole twice but look at the reasoning carbon dioxide reacts with lime water to form calcium hydrogen carbonate which is a white precipitate here this is colorless okay a bit of inorganic chemistry I know people find it to be like, yeah, it's not hard, it's not mug, it's not. This is difficult, but it's not. Go through the reaction, and life will be simple. Okay, cool. So yeah, because of this, the answer, yeah, you're right. Uh, I see Raghu Rai saying calcium carbonate is from excellent. So assertion is correct, reasoning is not, which is why option C is correct. So everyone has said that. Great work, great work, great work. Yeah, yeah. Someone's asking, <laughs> yeah, lime with the space is nimbu pani, yeah. Without the space, it's uh, you know the chemical compound. All right. now this question here slowly filling up the bar we've got to identify x y and z or z based on the following observations uh this the reason why this question is hard is because what you have here are so many tables you've got a 3 by 3 3 by 4 matrix over here so much to do you got to identify x y and z truly a cruel question but it's very doable okay we're going to solve this so quickly you will be completely amazed that a seemingly difficult question can be solved this quickly The main idea is just the physical and chemical properties of metals. What kind of metals do you have? You have iron in the mix. You have lithium, sodium, and you have magnesium and sodium and and lead also. If you try to hack it and say that ah, sodium and magnesium are soft, hota hai, but lead is also soft, boss. So don't do all of that. You know, let's go ahead and do this one step at a time. Figure out what X could be, then what Y could be, and what Z could be. That is the simplest way of doing this. I know in some MCQs you can brute force it and you know eliminate options, but let's do it step by step. This is easier here. Look. both iron and aluminum are definitely hard both of them react with steam okay the reaction is given to you over here and it's an easy reaction but you know that it reacts you know asking for the reaction is we know that the reaction happens okay now the reaction is cacl2 that's interesting does it happen look at where calcium is and i think it does for both right aluminum and iron are both below calcium in the reactivity series which means that they will get displaced from the salt solutions but ha huh, Okay, this is interesting. There's no reaction. I'm I'm sorry. I said the other way around, right? Because iron and 
aluminum are below calcium they are not going to displace calcium from CaCl2 so obviously there's going to be no reaction yeah so that's this both of this both of these are right cool no reaction what about zinc Cl2 ah I think this is going to be the litmus test right one of them is one of them is not if the given element is above zinc it will displace it from its solution which is zinc chloride if it is below it it will not since iron is below it there's going to be no reaction but since which is the other one you've got aluminium is above it oh reaction will happen so aluminium is not the answer and iron is the answer here okay because i'm going to read this out one time just to be sure what is given is that no reaction happens but with aluminium reaction hota hai. that's why there's a cross over here okay this is the reaction over here hence this over here is definitely iron and not aluminium so we have removed these options but by looking at x looking at y is going to make you tear your hair out because both lithium and sodium are soft both of them react with water they are very very reactive uh, we have some amazing videos on the app <laughs> showing you how the reaction happened don't try this at home and both of them also react with calcium right because they are more reactive than calcium chloride so they will react with calcium chloride to remove calcium which is getting annoying now you are like okay maybe the last one is going to give you the answer and interestingly <laughs> uh, yeah they react with zinc chloride as well so you are like what's the point yeah you can't tell anything from the second option that's why this gets a little uh, complicated right because you can't tell anything whether it's lithium or sodium from the second option if you had identified the right way you would have saved time you could have just gone over to z and figured it out but that maybe will come with practice okay so why it doesn't give us any answer i know cruel thing for the examiners to do what about z okay sodium and magnesium i think they're both soft but do they react with water yeah yeah definitely i think they both react with water for sure yeah they're very reactive what about reaction with cacl2 what do you think does it or does it not react which one reacts which one does not react can you like type out on the on the on the on the chat which one do you think reacts with uh, cold water with cacl2 and which one does not any ideas some people are still saying c and yeah no one's taking this uh, taking the risk of na mg both ah good good there is a split opinion okay so look magnesium is reactive but not as reactive as calcium now this i know you need to know a little bit of the reactivity so you used to be able to do this calcium is above magnesium so only with magnesium will there be no reaction with sodium there will be reaction which i just crossed out because the statement here is no reaction i know yaar confusing hai yaar isme likha hai no reaction but reaction hota hai so do this slowly this is one of those questions where if there was negative marking i would not touch it with a 10 foot pole but since it does not have negative marking or if it, you know if it did not have negative marking then please attempt it but towards the end when you have some time uh, because it needs some time to do it okay don't try to brute force this one okay so magnesium is the answer and sodium is not interestingly zn cl2 sure both of them react Whew. so what's the deal guys which one is it magnesium last one is magnesium oh it's c a lot of you have been saying c all this time and with that we are done with chemistry c for chemistry <laughs> that was not a plant i swear that was not a plant so yeah thanks for sticking around uh, i know went a little quick on the last question because this is something you have to spend time on i don't want to bore you with it a lot of you already given me the right answer so I hope you enjoyed this and let's move on to bio. Ankita is here. Here you go. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Yes. Hi, everyone. So let's move to bio. Hello. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me properly and you know, you can definitely see me. I can see your eyes. Hi. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'll not be taking that much time, but let's move ahead to the bio part. Now, before we get into the session, you were telling that bio is amazing, you love bio. So let's see, do we have some interesting questions? Yes? Before I just came over here, I saw, you know, we have 200. Come on, call your friends out. Sharing is caring, right? And how many of you like the video? Come on, come on. And subscribe the channel, hit the bell icon, all of that. I love bio, yes. Awesome. Do you like studying bio? Please come on, come on. With this poll, we will be starting our questions. Yes, thank you, Charvi. Awesome. Okay, now let's start with the first question and we have some difficult questions ahead. Now, over here we have this image, right? Now, it looks really very complicated. Just look at it. Bio is interesting, bio is easy, but bio is never tough. Okay, 
So it's a difficult question, but let's make it really very easy. So we have this image, of course, we can see this. And we have this labelings. We have vertebrae X and Y. Now, if you read the question for you, we have this image. It shows the path for blood that actually travels or takes to the circulatory system in these two. Now, what we have to do, we just have to identify, right? And we have these options with us. Yes, we have these options with us. And we have to. Okay, I can see the poll. 88% of you like studying bio. Yes. Yeah, bio team. Yes. Awesome. Okay, we have these options. And of course, let's quickly go through them. And let's, have, let's try to understand why this question is difficult at very first place. So as you look at these two diagrams, they look really very complicated. And over here, we have some options. And we have to find out. So we have vertebrate group X. Is of course belongs to the fish one. Then we have Y, which is the amphibian. We have the blood travels only through the heart in the vertebrae group X during one complete circulation. So these are the important keywords that we have to focus upon because mostly the answers are hidden in the question itself. So we have to do that. Then, of course, we have the third statement talks about the organism belonging to X and Y are cold blooded. A very good hint I can say over here and vertebrate group Y has an organism with a sing single circulation so I'm sure we have the hint and of course the one thing which is there we can take it out from these statement the important keywords that we have to focus upon is two things we have amphibians and we have fishes the Pisces right of course we have cold-blooded with this and let's move ahead and let's quickly look at this now how many of you love frog yes tell me how many of you love frogs yeah, I can see. See, I love. I love frogs. So when you, when you talk about frogs, you must have seen, right? We usually see, see them in the monsoon season and they jump here and there. Yes. Now we call them amphibians, right? You can write in the chat why we call them as amphibians and why they're really very special. In terms of biology, we should actually love them because they are the one who actually came out of the water. And they just gave us life. Yes. No one in the world, oh, no, we love. Biology, the real biologist will definitely love because they are the one that actually pushed the evolution. Interesting. Yes, so we have this frog and we were talking about it. So they are cold blooded, definitely, you are absolutely correct. Pavan, yes. So we have it and of course we have this. Now, what is it? We have the circulatory system. Now, one thing we can definitely see over here is the heart. But we have something really, very really special, right? They have three chambered heart and not the four chambered heart. Now we can see how the vogue or the circulation happens over here. So we have this lung capillaries from there. When they breathe in, of course, oxygen moves, moves to the left atrium. From there goes to the different parts of the body, right? From there, and we have this ventricle and we have moving back again to the right atrium. And of course, again, moving out of the body. Now, one thing which is really very important about these, that they have incomplete chambered, right? Of course, they have incomplete double circulation. And they don't have four chambered heart. They have three chambered heart. This is really important. And important thing that they are cold blooded. Now, I can see many of you are writing absolutely correct. They can tolerate the mixing of the blood, yes, because they are cold blooded. And more than that, they can actually get the oxygen from the skin also. So there is no much of requirement of the four chambered heart, which is really necessary for all of us. Yes, yes. Very good, Uma. I can see bio is the beauty of life. Agreed. Awesome. So we have this now moving to the fishes, right? Over here we have and fish and the single circulatory system. Now they are really very special. Not as special as frog, but they are because every organism we have is special. So what happens over there? They have gills and they live in water. And we know that oxygen is dissolved there. So what happens when they breathe in? When they breathe in, the oxygen flows and goes directly into the blood capillaries, takes up the carbon dioxide and rush towards the heart. There's only single circulation. This is really important. And of course, they have the one atrium and one ventricle. And of course, the blood goes out. So again, when, when we talk about these fishes, they have single circulatory system and they are also the cold-blooded animal.
So are we clear with it? I can see the answers already, but I have to explain this because there are few confusion here. Yes, B for Y juice, that's the correct answer. So we have, this is the vertebrae Y and of course we have the answer with us. I can see a lot of Bs over here. Yes. Awesome. So we have the answer with us, that is B. Now, can you tell me what over here, the statement 3 and 4. Now, organism belonging to X and Y are both cold-blooded. Definitely, they are cold-blooded. And the Y has a single circulation. That is, the fish is right. They have a single circulation. Right? Awesome. It was an easy question now. Congratulations. Very good. Now, I can see one question. What is the difference between the cold-blooded and the warm-blooded? You tell me. It's a very easy question. When we talk about the cold-blooded and the warm-blooded animals, there's one thing that comes to our mind. One can actually adapt and can maintain their body temperature and one changes according to the environment. See, you and I are warm-blooded. See, I'm wearing a sweater because I feel cold, right? I'm a warm-blooded animal. But of course, the alligators and the frog will not be doing that. Yes? Absolutely correct, Yogi. It's the temperature regulation. Awesome. Now, let's move to the next question. And I'm telling you, this question is really very difficult. Now, when we look at this particular question, yes, we have it. An experiment is set up over here, which we can definitely see. We have test tube 1, which contains a solution of a potassium hydroxide. Then we have test tube 2 and test tube 3 containing freshly prepared lime water. I hope you remember. Ashi sir was teaching you that. So over here we have the lime water. Yes, we have chemistry in bio. Then we have a conical flask between the second and over here we can see this, which have some germinating seeds. And then we have, when we blow the air, what will happen? We have this particular setup and we have this X, which is a pipe, which has been set up in this way. What do you think will be the appearance of the lime water in the test tube, second and three? It's a very easy question. But over here, if you look at these all statements, we may, might get confused why all of this is happening, right? But these questions are really very easy. I can see Kuldeep have already guessed the answer. Yes. Thank you, Aman. I can see. Yeah, you got the gist of it. Why? Okay. Why the mixing of the oxygenated and the oxygenated is not allowed to mix? Think about it, right? Oxygen is really important for us and it goes in a pure, very pure form. And deoxidated blood have carbon dioxide which is a waste product. If these two are getting mixed, it might hamper the metabolism which is happening in the body. So, it's not, it's not always good to get these things mixed. Especially in warm-blooded animal and in four-chambered heart animal. Yes. Now, we have this question and it's a jalebi question, right? It's all, all jalebi, jalebi, but it's really very easy. We have this question and of course we have the options and I can see the answers. I think many of you actually attempted the test and you have the answers with you. Okay, here's a poll question for all of you that which option do you think is the correct answer? Come on. Yeah, rather than actually writing A, B, C in the chat box, you can actually take the poll. Yes, I can see the answers flooding over here and let's quickly discuss this question because it's really very important. Now we have this experiment. Let's see what is happening one by one. So we have, when we blow the air, what will happen? We release the carbon dioxide, exhalation of the carbon dioxide, right? What will happen? This carbon dioxide will go over there. But do you remember, we have the potassium hydroxide over here, which is KOH. And what it does, it actually absorbs the carbon dioxide. Yes? Yes, it, it does that. Now, once it does that, what will happen from here? we'll see no color change. Nothing will happen over here, right? Then we have this. And of course, from here, this will be moving to the next tube. Now, the lime water will remain unchanged because there was no carbon dioxide over here. This is really very important. Yes. Then, from here, it will be moving to the test tube too. Yes. And what will happen over here? Please write in the chat box what will happen over here. I know the correct option, but there are few kids who want to learn. Because we all get confused with this question, especially me. See for Kistra. Come on. Tell me why, why, why? Why this test tube over here, which we're talking about second, does not turn 
there was no color change nothing was happening over here yes okay i can see few answers over here no color change very good very good it just actually tell that you are paying attention over here okay you have the answers let's see what will happen as there is no connection as the from here when the gas will move over here there is no connection this is there to confuse you see important thing over here can you see this part well, this part is not actually going inside it this is important this is just to confuse you so that we think okay my god germinating seed will be releasing the carbon dioxide that's important so please pay attention to the question and to the diagram because this time cbse have the image based question so if we get not wrong correct so we might feel trouble okay now from moving from here there's no connection between these two and we'll move to the next one and what will happen over here let's see when the hair will pass over here we will see the color change right the germinating seed which released the carbon dioxide will be moving from here to here and of course then we'll see the color change and what we'll see the lime water in the test tube will be turning milky due to the carbon dioxide or this you already know from the chemistry part so we have the answer with us and this is the whole setup now if you go back to the question over here we can actually see these all things and out of these option number c is absolutely correct now are we happy with it a smiley face for all of us because we are working really very really hard right now i want to see a smiley chain so that we have some confidence to move into the next question come on come on a smiley chain for all of us because we are working really very really hard look at the difficulty level of this question right see i'm sweating over here we did amazing awesome there's a poll please answer there do you want more such informative session yes definitely moving ahead i can see a long smiley chain we all are here and we have a little bit easy question we have we have amazing heart over here right so we have this view of human heart we have to find out the functions of the blood vessels which are numbered from 1 to 4 easy peasy question we have our heart so let's look at the options we have right here we go here we have and we have all of it so if we read this carries blood from heart to blood cells then we have carry blood from heart to lungs we have carries blood from lungs to the heart and then we have carries blood from the body cells to heart now this is easy this is super easy and we have the circulatory system awesome now what we'll do we will quickly revise the circulatory system i know that many of you find it really very difficult but i'm telling you it's super easy now we have our circulatory system we have our lungs yes i can see the answers claps 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 but let's just quickly look it into it we have there's lungs when we breathe and what happens oxygen rushes and of course we have pulmonary vein that carries the oxygen rich blood from the lungs to the heart then from there we have aorta right that carries the blood from the heart to the different parts of the body right from there we have vena cava which carries the carbon rich blood or the deoxidated blood to the heart and then we have pulmonary artery that carries the blood from heart to the lungs for the purification easy this is done so if we have this all we have the correct answer which is option number d ta da again a smiley for all of us and let's move quickly to the next question i can see a lot of your answers d d d yes aman very good vinay shri pavan kamal awesome hari priya ramesh very good see that's amazing now moving to the next question now again if you look at this question the difficulty level is really very high but we'll make it easy right so we have to identify the correct order in which lymph moves from the intercellular spaces to the blood stream now tell me honestly tell me honestly how many of you know what is lymph yes this is a one question which actually tricks all of us it usually come for one mark just the definition of lymph what is a lymph but tell me what happens when you talk about lymph and what is the first thing that comes to your mind lymph it's a very important don't know ma'am we will be discussing that 
इम्यून फ्लूड ओ सर्कुलेटरी फ्लूड ओके वेरी गुड सुभाषरी ओके यस लिम्फ इज टिश्यू फ्लूड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड लिम्फ इज सिमिलर टू दी प्लाज्मा बट कलर लेस एंड हैज लेस प्रोटीन वेरी गुड हैव नो आर बी सीज राइट कलरलेस फ्लूड यस टिश्यू फ्लूड ओके सो वी हैव एन आइडिया अबाउट द लिम्फ सो वन थिंग वी आर श्योर ऑफ वी जस्ट हैव टू फाइंड द पाथ व्हिच इज फॉलोस नाउ विद दिस लेट्स लुक एट दिस सिस्टम and let's try to understand about it so we have the circulatory system but we're not looking over here we are actually focusing on the main part here we have now what we have over here now see look over here now these are the cells right and what happens when we look closely we'll get a better understanding about it now just focus over here because this is really important look at the amazing animation which is going tara i can dance with these rbcs right they're just there with me what happens there's a leak of the plasma we can see there's a leak of the plasma into the right and of course that fluid will be going out carrying oxygen and nutrient and this actually help in removing the excess waste material also now as it moves out what happens it will be going around it and slowly slowly it will form its own vessels own capillaries right the green color one now what happens over there let's see if we look closely over here we'll be able to see that inside that the fluid that actually moves how the excess fluid will be entering again right see over here and this is called as lymph easy now it's super easy for us now this lymph will be forming an amazing system right and that system is the lymphatic system see over here right now of course it will be draining the blood into the veins over here and it will be forming the lymphatic system we have the pathway with us so let's go back to the options over here and let's see the final answer the final answer is option number b very good aman yes i can see your answer ramesh the answer is b we have just discussed it will be forming first the lymphatic capillaries right then to the lymphatic vessels and finally that will be drained into the veins I hope you got this part because this is really important it's most confusing part when we talk about the circulatory system in general. Yes. You know awesome. So we are done with this question and finally we are on the last question. Now we have this. We have to observe the image which is given over here. We have two test tubes, right? Simple it's a very simple question altogether. We have a starch solution and we have a starch solution plus saliva. now what is happening over here we have the starch so the one thing that we can quickly recall is about the starch that we, when we take starch what happens right related to the digestive system if you haven't watched the video you can actually watch it's there in the playlist so do that then of course we have when we talk about it we have to find the answer and we just have to see what will be happening when we'll be adding the iodine solution to it simple question right it's a very simple question here we have the two test tubes with us tara very good very good vapor one will turn blue black and other will not yeah we have the answers right we have the starch solution right and we have the starch solution plus saliva now what will be doing it we will be adding the iodine solution here we have the iodine and let's add it and let's see the magic over here now of course one will be turning blue black over here because it has starch right and the other we have brown color why we have the brown color and we have the sugar right so there's a connection to it we have salivary amylase which is released which will be breaking down the carbohydrate basically the sugar will be getting broken down and because of that we'll see the change in color we'll have the brown color and not the blue color it's a very important thing very very important thing because at this particular point we get really confused awesome yes i can see the answers So let's go back, right? Yeah, we are done with it. So saliva will turn maltose, very good, awesome, and we have the A part. Yeah, we are done with the bio part. Is it too soon? So A for answer, and A for Ashwin sir. Oh, what a segue! Thank you for that. Hey, did you guys have fun with biology? 
By the way, when I was off camera, I just found out that the admit card for Great Terror 12 is out. Yes, a few minutes ago this was announced. You can actually check this out on the internet as well. For now, let's focus on physics. What do you guys have in physics? I mean, it's really easy stuff, right? If you don't believe that it's easy stuff, just saying, if you don't believe that it's easy stuff, then you're just thinking about it not very effectively. Hopefully, in a few minutes' time, you'll see that all the things that we're going to encounter are such easy peasy, done and breezy stuff. Okay? Um, I know, I know, I know, I know, I said the wrong thing by saying that your admit cards are out. Do not switch tabs and start looking for the admit card logins right now. Do that in a few minutes, all right? Because remember, a lot of you have been asking, how do I prepare best online? How do I study by myself using tools that I have on the internet and on the app and so on and so forth? It's just about giving dedicated time and attention and not getting distracted, all right? Also, I see about 200 of you are here. Call your friends up. I know that you missed or they missed the biology and the chemistry segments. And by the way, Ankita ma'am, I like frogs as well. And yes, it's not just chemistry in biology. It's physics after all. <laughs> okay, we have a few questions. Let's go through some of them. Question 17 on the PDF. In a torch light. A reflector is used to get a parallel beam of light. Which of the options is the most suitable for this use? This is super duper easy, right? Big fan, big fan, big fan. Shh. B, 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 concave, 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 B, concave. This is like super easy, right? I don't even know why in that corner it says two boxes of difficulty level. Of course, it's con, con, con what? Ah, let's figure that out, right? What is a convex mirror? That's basically a mirror this way. Right? Assuming light is being incident from here. What is a concave mirror? It's this. What is a plane mirror? It's this. If I need parallel beam of light, it basically needs to take diverging things and converge it. Which of these is a converging lens? That's all the question is. Remember, focus! This is going to start diverging by reflecting. This is going to start converging by reflecting. But it's not the usual way that we think about this, right? In a torch light or a flashlight, the bulb is so positioned that rays from the bulb will of course go out in all directions. But check out what happens to those rays which go and hit the reflecting surface, right? That, just an FYI, is how you get parallel beams out with the bulb at focus. The beams leave parallelly, right? Sir, why not plane mirror? Good question. Because if I have to keep something in front of a plane mirror and expect that it will come out as a parallel beam, unfortunately, this guy is going to block it, right? Think about it, okay? You have to imagine. Physics is just about imagining and observing the things that are happening around you. B for brilliant. I have a doubt on refractive index. Hold on. We have some questions on that as well. We'll come to that real quick. Torchlight, concave, mirror. Where else do you see concave mirrors being used? Put that up on the chat. Let's see. Ah. I said chat. Is that comment section or chat section? I'm confused on live sessions. Anywho, this I'm not confused by. During the daytime, the sky appears to be blue. <laughs> but it changes to red in the evening during sunset. The correct reason for this phenomenon. Hey, stop. Don't read the options. Hold on. We're talking about sky appears to be blue, but it changes to red in the evening. What is blue and red? It's colors, right? What colors? Light, right? So, temperature is an option out here. Definitely not that. Wind speed, <laughs> not that. Something to do with light, right? Distance between sun and the earth increases in the evening. Huh? Wait. Huh? <laughs> no, no, no. That happens over a massive revolution. Day and night, evening and morning happens because of rotation, right? Light travels more distance in the atmosphere during the evening. You see that? Without even getting into the physics, you can just look at the words that are used here and use logic to say that these is the answer. But just for the few of you who are a little curious, and I love that you love physics, and I love that so many D's are out there. C. Somebody said C also. I'm very curious. The distance between the sun and the earth is kind of fixed, right? Of course, it's not a circle. There's a fixed closest and a fixed farthest. What we're looking for is how light plays in all of this, right? During daytime, what happens? It's as though the sun is directly above your head. I can just show you a quick imagery around here, right? Look, there's a dude standing out here, okay? 
technically what happens is light gets scattered by the particles in the atmosphere what particles gas molecules dust particles so many things now when white light why am i showing a rainbow out here you know that right white light is nothing but a composition of all energies or all colors of light check this out in the atmosphere the particles are small enough that they will start scattering away all your violets and your blues and your slightly little bit pieces of greens as well which means what reaches the dude out here is all of these colors right now what are all of those colors collectively they are going to look a little orangish which is why you have an orange sun and all the scattered blues and the violets go all around the sky giving me a blue sky but whip gear exactly 45 degrees i will come to that degrees thing in a little while or not the spectrum pieces of it get scattered after scattering it reaches us from where not directly from the sun right from the sky blue sky or in sun and check this out what happens in the evening this light traveled a distance from the edge of the atmosphere till the person in the evening though there is a slight difference in how we are receiving sunlight right i mean check that out the sun kind of is where it was the earth rotated and then person now receives sunlight except the sunlight is traveling a much greater distance inside of the atmosphere even now scattering will happen because of the particles in the air not just the blues and the greens and the violets but also some traces of the greens and the yellows and the oranges which is why the sky looks orangish and the sun looks redish because the sun's light that's reaching is this region and every other color kind of gets mixed up and reaches us from the sky isn't that so cool atmospheric refraction yes atmospheric dispersion yes and atmospheric scattering predominantly scattering but scattering was not an option given to us what were the options light travels a greater distance in the atmosphere during the evening therefore a longer time to scatter therefore more particles that it encounters and more energies get scattered out and that's the reasons right super easy i don't know why this is called so difficult but it's just about visualizing that's all it is right red will scatter less but how red sunset that's what that's, that's a fun thing right the sky is not necessarily red it's orangish all the yellows and the oranges are also getting scattered the sun non scattered red light reaches our eyes isn't that cool physics is a very interesting subject all right cool um what do we have next just another question uh da -da -da somebody asked for refractive index right that's what's coming up right now okay a ray of light is incident now check that out i'm going to read that question but don't get intimidated it's a lot of words we'll just take it slow a ray of light is incident at the glass water interface at an angle of i is equal to 41.8 degrees whoa that's on complex it emerges finally parallel to the surface of water what okay from glass it's going this way let me use uh, orangish color it's going this way and then it's getting bent what is that refraction and then it's getting bent again but it's getting so cool bent that it's going parallel to the surface now question what would be the value of refractive index of the given glass okay first up look at the options what are the options saying 7 by 3 1.5 4 by 3 1 you kind of know that in most of the questions that you have about refraction and glass slab and all that stuff air has an approximate relative refractive index of 1 or 1.003 whatever you want to think water usually has a refractive index of 4 over 3 or 1.33 and so on right you know that glass usually has a refractive index of 1.5 so you might be tempted to just say 1.5 just by reading the options that's not bad but it's not the right approach to problem solving as well right we need to break this down and use the content theory that we know snell's law tells us that sine of incident angle divided by sine of refracted angle not reflected snell's law applies in refraction is equal to the ratio of relative refractive index which is mu of the second medium to the first medium the medium in which refraction has happened to the medium before the surface came into play okay in a sense sine of this guy by sine of this guy sine of i by sine of r is equal to refractive relative of water what is water's refractive index let me just call it mu w divided by mu glass right 
simple, easy peasy. Let's take it step by step. Use the stuff that's given to us. Ah, refractive index of water is 4 by 3 is given to us. Sine 41.8 degrees, 0 0.6 is. I was scared that we might have to compute that sign. And I was thinking, how do I tell people how to compute that? Even I don't know it. <laughs> Anywho, look at what's happening here. Very simple. There are two interfaces at which interaction of light is happening, right? Sin i by sin r is equal to mu 2 by mu 1. Of course, I know you can't type mu. I don't know this answer. If, uh, no worries. It's really easy, okay? Think about this. Light is interacting at two points. First interaction happens here. Second interaction happens here. Now, let's look at what is the interaction that's happening on top, okay? Basically, the interface is water to air. Water to air. That's how the sense of travel was, okay? Now, going by the same Snell's law logic, what is the angle of incidence at that interaction point? Check this out. Because of geometrical symmetry, this also happens to be an angle R, okay? So, don't get confused that sin i by sin r. Always think about it in terms of sin of angle of incidence divided by sin of angle of refraction. In this case, sin of angle of incidence is sin of r. Okay? What is the angle of refraction or the refracted angle? Basically, with the normal, this guy is making 90 degrees, which means angle of refraction out here is 90, sin of 90. That ratio, according to Snell's law, is... Mu of the second medium, which in this case is air, divided by mu of the first medium, which in this case is water. Remember, this is relative refractive index. Okay, And what's happening in the bottom interface? It's from glass to water. right? From glass to water, glass water interface. Sin i by sin r is equal to mu water by mu glass. Simple, straightforward. I hope you're getting this so far. Okay, uh, It still does undergo refraction right by the way this is not the whole truth most materials at most interfaces reflection also takes place some bit of absorption also takes place some bit of refraction also takes place okay now how do we solve for this though remember we have been told a couple of important values what are those values it has already been given to us that relative refractive index of water mu water is 4 over 3 sine of 41.8 degrees is 0 0.66 how do I express that in a fraction? Uh, 1 over 3, 0 0.33, twice of that. So 2 over 3. Okay, I'm just going to keep this in fractions because I'm using math here. Yeah. Unit multiplication division becomes easy. Assumed air refractive index relative is 1. Okay, All I need to do is plug these values in here. So look, sin r by sin 90 is equal to mu air, which is nothing but 1, over mu water, which is nothing but 4 over 3. What is 1 over 4 over 3? That's basically 3 over 4. Doesn't stop there. What is sine of 90 degree? Sine 0 is 0. Sine 90 is 1. In other words, sine r is equal to 3 over 4. That's it. So cool. So we have sine r equals 3 over 4. Now check this out. I will substitute this guy out here. And now I can find out i. So check this. I, what is I? Oh, I is given to us 41.8 degrees. I forgot about that. Sine 2 by 3. Whoa, look, simple substitutions. Everything becomes so super duper easy. Basically, 2 over 3 divided by, I just found out sine r, thanks to the geometrical, 3 over 4 is equal to mu w, which is given to us again. 4 over 3 divided by mu of glass. What was the question? Question asked us to find what is the mu of glass. Simple. So, cross multiply. Before cross multiplying, let's just simplify as much as we can, right? 2 over 3 times 4 over 3 is equal to 4 over 3 times 1 over mu of glass. I hope this stuff is visible. Let me move. Ah, there. Okay, cool. So, what do I cancel? 4 cancels out, 3 cancels out on either side. Mu of glass is equal to inverse of this, which is 3 over 2. Ta -da -da. But remember, fractions are not there. This is nothing but 1.5, okay? And that, by the way, is our answer. Sir, how sine i is equal to sine r? I love that question. Sine i is not equal to sine r. I told you, do not memorize Snell's law as sine i by sine r. Okay, that's a little risky. Always memorize it as sine of incident angle over sine of refracted angle. Right? Don't think of it in terms of sin i and sin r because i and r can be used as parameters in some part of that equation. Right? 
Keep in mind, it's sign of incident over sign of refracted. Check this out. In this first case, this is the incident and this is the refracted. I is the incident, R is the refracted. Easy peasy. In the second case, because these are alternate interior angles of parallel normal fellows, sine of incident is equal to sine of angle R. R here does not mean refracted. R is just some variable. It could be theta, it could be P, it could be Q, whatever. We've just used R. And what is the sign of refracted angle? That's 90 degree. Okay, keep that in mind. It's really important that you need to understand that Snell's law is not sin I by sin R. I basically refers to angle of incidence. R refers to angle of refraction. Okay. Thanks for making us understand better. I'm so glad that you did because trust me, before I came into this session, right, I was trying to work these things out and I'm like, I was just telling a friend of mine that I am definitely going to make mistakes out here. But then I thought, hey, what do I do so that I don't make mistakes? I go by the first principles. Think about what you're doing. Okay. Speaking of thinking about what you're doing, in a car, in a rear view mirror, having a radius of curvature of 20 meter forms a virtual image of a bus 5 meter behind the mirror. What is the actual distance of the bus from the car? Quickly, what is the kind of mirror that's used in a rear view mirror? I don't know if you know this, but it's basically a... Da -da -da, let me draw it out here. What kind of mirror is this? This is a convex mirror. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use a car and a bus diagram and all that. I'm just going to use an object. Okay. Let's say car having radius of curvature. What is radius of curvature? Radius of curvature. I'm a little confused. Radius of curvature R is basically the distance between pole of the mirror and center of the sphere from which the mirror has been cut out. Right? That is so cool. Hey, someone said this is convex mirror. Awesome. Everybody said this is convex mirror. Cool. Super. Baiju fake. Somebody says Aditya Krishna 3. I'm like, cool. It is a mock exam after all. <laughs> Anywho, R is 20 meter. Cool. Image distance is given to us. What is that image distance? Forms a virtual image of a bus 5 meter behind the mirror. Now check this out. You know that in sign convention, the image is made behind the mirror. Keep in mind that this is behind and this is forward. Okay. This is forward or ahead. This is behind. Okay. I know it's time. I know there's quite a few of you who are thinking about how to solve for physics. Please be with me. Please call your friends as well because these are little tricky intricacies, intricacies that you want to explore. Now, if the object was here, which is basically our bus, image also is behind the mirror. Okay, which means object and image are both negative because remember this side is positive side. What is the actual distance of the bus from the car? But okay, it's already given to us. This is 5, right? Negative 5. Is it negative 5? Think about it. What is virtual image behind the mirror? Mirror is not like a lens. Whatever is on the painted side, that is behind the mirror. Whatever is on the reflected side is front of the mirror. Okay. I need you to listen to everything that I'm saying because these are the ways in which you'll confuse yourself during your exams. I know it's time already, but we'll take a little more minutes, explore this because I want to make sure that you get it, all right? 40 over 40, awesome. 20 over 20 is the kind of vision that I will not have without my spectacles. Anywho, so this is positive 5, okay? Everything that is in front, we'll consider as positive. Uh, sorry, anything that is on this side, we consider as positive, so behind is positive. Object distance is the object Behind the mirror or in front of the mirror? Think about it. Object is behind the mirror, right? That's why we're able to see the image. Cool. With all of this in place, I have parameters listed down. What formula can I use? You know this. It's a mirror. I'll use the mirror formula. Simple. 1 by V plus 1 by U equals 1 by F. Uh, but wait, I don't have F out here. How do I get F? How do I get F? Folks, repeat that refractive index question, please. How about this? After the session is done, the video is going to be available. So go back and watch it again, right? I hope that helps. Okay, how do I get F? How do I get F? Lens formula, awesome. Thank you. R over 2, right? 20 divided by 2. Awesome stuff. Really simple, right? How do I do that? I use the focal length formula of F is equal to R over 2 because F is nothing but half the distance between the center and the pole. Cool. Which is basically 10 meter. Now tell me something, is that going to be positive 10 or negative 10? Remember, all of U, V and F have to be with proper sign convention. F, 
for a mirror which is this way we always consider this focal point is that positive or is that negative that's positive okay always keep this in mind if you do not memorize this don't mug it up simply visualize it it's really easy peasy okay super all right so now we have this and now i can simply substitute stuff in the equation as simple as that what do i do i got to do 1 by v is positive 5 plus 1 over u is i don't know equals 1 over positive 10 simple 1 over u equals 1 over 10 minus 1 over 5 what is 1 over 10 minus 1 over 5 that's basically uh, 1 over 5 is 2 over 10 that's 1 minus 2 over 10 which is negative 1 over 10 in other words u becomes negative 10 not just random negative 10 what are the units out here meter right so negative 10 meter let's check if i have negative 10 in my options by the way I will not have negative 10 why will i not have negative 10 because sign convention tells me negative but the distance is not negative distance is just the magnitude sign convention tells me that the object was behind the mirror because it was negative okay do not get confused about why these negative fellows are there here okay cool eight centimeter am i right yes you are hashim awesome next question dev 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 is observing a small bug i hope the dev is not observing a bug because a computer bug cannot be done with a magnifying i think it's just an insect using a convex lens magnifying lens initially he kept the lens at 10 centimeter distance from the bug and he saw that a magnified upright image of the bug twice its original size <gasps> hold on before reading the question i want to see this okay forget about the distance and all that he saw a magnified upright image using a convex lens is that a virtual image or is that a real image think about it magnified upright upright erect erect and virtual always go in pairs okay cool Twice its original size. That means it's bigger, right? All good, guys? Ooh, I think the AC is not working really well because I'm sweating. I just hope that I think Dave with all the magnifying lens, even the bug would have been sweating. Dave, move the magnifying lens five centimeter closer. Okay, so here was this bug. Dave held a magnifying glass out here at a distance of 10 centimeter. And then he moved it to a distance of five centimeter. Cool. That's what happened. So basically, there is first setup and then there is second setup. What is the size of the image that he will see in the second setup? Whew. I've completed all mock board exam. Sir, in board exam, we'll have only one minute for each question. Time will not be there. Hey, check this out. I am not here giving you a mock of answering a question paper, right? Because if I were doing that, by now, all three subjects would have been over, right? Easily. I am trying to tell you how to think about things. The more you practice, why do you do mock exams? It's not that you give all your mock exams and get all your questions right, but you're still fairly confident for taking your term, term papers, right? Why? Because as you're practicing, you start internalizing how is it that you can problem solve. And at the exam, it's a different focus, no distractions. You're not thinking about, I am not going to be, when I'm solving a paper, thinking about what are the little things that I need to tell my students. I'm not going to be thinking about, uh, am I displaying it correctly? Am I in the right location on the screen? I am not going to be thinking about any of these technicalities, right? In the exam paper, it's really easy, quick focus. That's why you need to practice. That's why you need to learn a lot, a lot, a lot, and a lot to be able to show that you've learned something, okay? M will stay the same. It's all about learning new thing, not about taking mark. I mean, truth be told, if you really fall in love with learning something, and if you really like a subject, and if you really start exploring it deeply, marks, though it'll happen easily. Marks are just one small indicator of learning. Okay, Cool. So what's the answer? We don't know yet. We saw that there are two cases. Case one was where we know that object, in this case the bug, was 10 meter. But now why am I saying it is negative 10 meter? Think about it. Because if I have a magnifying lens and I have a bug out here, which side is the image going to be virtual and direct it's going to be this side itself right or where is it going to be keep in mind that whenever you're doing it you usually have 
a central mirror or lens and then the object is usually placed on the left hand side okay that's how convention teaches us this so that your positive negative sign convection works out easily okay always keep in mind do not muck things up do not assume things visualize it and it will become really easy okay u is understood v i don't know but i know magnification which is twice the original size okay second case u became not negative 10 centimeter what was the second case it was negative 5 meter or centimeter so many mistakes that i made i hope you don't make these mistakes okay check this out what is the size of image that you will see which means i need to figure out what is the size of image could it mean that i want the height of the image could also mean that i want magnification or relative size of that image okay we'll figure out as things go along let's take case one and what do i need to do keep in mind the lens can move which means that the image position and object position can move it's the same lens what is that one property that's going to be same for a lens no matter where you look at it from i kind of already gave you an indication out there what is it what is that property of a image construction that's not going to change focal length because that's a property of the lens itself okay i'm confused no worries two things case one case two lens you have to use equation it's as simple as that okay what equation do you have to use first up magnification is given to us you know magnification is height of image by height of object simple m is equal to v by u right don't get confused about all the build up with the bugs in the visualizing so far magnification is this but for knowing magnification i need v and u or i know magnification and i can find out v i will use this equation to tell me that m is 2 u is negative 10 therefore v is going to become 20 is that simple okay now is that going to be positive 20 or negative 20 is that going to be positive 20 or negative 20 hold on 4 over 3 4 over 3 4 over 3 40 40 in signs wow 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 okay simple stuff again think about it v is going to be negative 20 and is not meter this is centimeter okay now using lens formula i find the focal length 1 over f is equal to 1 over negative 20 minus 1 over negative 10 lens formula not mirror formula remember where your positives and negatives are coming up okay yes negative 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 positive uh, shreyas it's two times negative 10 da. how will it be positive right think about it i'm going slow because these are the silly places where we will lose speed and traction this is actually not as difficult as it's indicated on the chart out there okay what is this this basically works out to let me move negative out so 1 by 20 minus 1 by 10 uh, what is 1 by 20 minus 1 by 10 which is basically 2 by 20 1 minus 2 is negative 1 by 20 minus of minus becomes plus 1 by f is equal to 1 by 20 so what is f is 20 centimeter all right cool now i have f is 20 centimeter all centimeter second case where did the lens move in other words lens moved is as good as object moved okay so good awesome 40 40 this was 20 what do i need to do same stuff lens formula magnification formula that's all it is okay what do I do first? Lens formula. Check this out. I have used prime out here to indicate that this is the second case. But for f, I have not used a prime because it's a constant property of the lens. 1 over f is equal to 1 over, what is v dash? How do I find v dash right now? I don't need to find 1 over f. I need to find v dash only. That's the thing that I don't know here. That's how I'll use that in magnification. Okay. So, this lens formula gives me 1 over positive 20 is equal to 1 over v dash minus 1 over negative 10. So far so good. Move this over to the other side. I have 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over v dash. That's 2 over 20. That's 3 over 20 is equal to 1 over v dash or v dash or v prime is going to be 20 over 3 centimeter. Now tell me, is that going to be negative or positive? Think about it. Negative or positive? Negative or positive? V dash is V prime. Second case, image. Okay. What do I do? 
What is the answer out here? Did you guys notice one major mistake that I've made? You asked what is V dash? U prime or U dash will be 5 centimeter. Keep in mind that these are the kind of silly errors that you cannot afford for yourself. You have to carry values exactly how you intend them. Okay, this is not negative 10. This is negative 5. Remember, this is case 2 where he moves the lens closer. 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over V dash minus 1 over negative 5. So 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5 is equal to 1 over V dash. 1 over 5 is nothing but 4 over 20. That becomes 5 over 20 is equal to 1 over V dash. <sighs> what is V dash? Think about it. What is V dash? Quickly, 1 over 20 plus 1 over Oh, I made a mistake. No, it is plus 1 over negative 5. So many mistakes. I told you. Silly errors, silly errors and silly errors. Okay. 1 over 20 minus 1 over 5 minus 4 over 20. Negative 3 over 20 is equal to 1 over V dash. Ah, so difficult. It's difficult only because there are silly errors that you might make. Okay. Take it slow. V prime is equal to or V dash. Second case, image position is equal to negative 20 over 3 centimeter. Oof. Simple stuff, but it can really make you break a sweat in your exams if you haven't practiced. Okay. I know the sign convention, but sometimes I can't effectively apply it. How to improve? Start visualizing. Start scribbling. Okay. Always start visualizing. Start scribbling. Scary. It is scary. Sir, your old look is fascinating. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Now, question is, what is the new size, right? Which is new magnification, right? I have V dash, I have U dash. That's basically negative 20 over 3 over negative 5. Cancels out to 4, which is negative and negative 4 over 3. Ah, in other words, it's 4 thirds of the bug's size. Wow. Kuldeep, fully confused? Let me walk you through exactly how we went about this, okay? We got one intimidating question which basically broke down into two cases. In the first case, we knew the object position, we knew the magnification. Using these two, we found out focus. In the second case, we knew the object position, we had to find the magnification. It's as simple as that. Two cases. Forget everything else. Okay. All the written stuff is right here. Use those formulas. Magnification formula. Lens formula. Make sure that you use your sign conventions right. Plug the values in. It's as simple as that. Okay. And then next case, you see that the answer is 4 over 3 of the original size of the bug. Did you get that? It might sound confusing because I made four errors and these are kind of errors that will always come in your way of problem solving. But these are not problems. These are challenges that you can get really good at by practicing again and again and again. Okay. Okay. With this four over three of us out here, Ashish, Ankita, you see we took some time, but we took some time to not just make you realize that this is how you solve your question. That's a different kind of a session altogether, right? The intent out here was to take the mock paper that we've designed. Again, remember, link in the description. Yes. I hope in biology, you've been able to think about what are the different content elements that you need to visualize and what are the different processes that you need to see. Yes. And that can all be really, really cool if you start falling in love with frogs and fishes and everything else that's happening. Yes. <laughs> and with chemistry, Remember, it was a mix of math and a mix of logic and a mix of facts that you have to remember. Yeah. And with physics, it's really simple. It will only seem problematic if you start mugging things up. Once you start visualizing and in a calm tone, plug the values in. Easy peasy. We are just buying time. We got something awesome for you. Hey, can you, <laughs> Jessima, can you go back to that, uh, this thing? Ta-da! This is a... First time you're probably seeing on the net. This is the yeah. This is a site. I'm gonna also gonna give you the link. I'll type it out. Can we do the? Can you guys see this? Okay. Anyway, I'll type it out 
uh, I'll write it on separately, but this is basically the link. You can you have to log in. Obviously, I'm not a student, so I'm, I can't scam this. You guys have to do this by yourselves. Yeah. There is a user ID password and there's a thing. Please go ahead, download it. That's all this is. Uh, the link is very easy to find. We'll also I'll also type it out and write it out on the slide itself. So and yeah, the comments. Yeah, yeah. There you go. This is the first place you saw it. So yeah. Uh, uh, another thing is that you know, please chill. <laughs> Come back to the. Yeah. Can you just one second? Just go get get back to the presentation, please. Hold on. This was it, right? Huh. Thanks, Yasamath. You are awesome. Yeah, I will write this down over here while Ashwin gives you a bit more <laughs> about this. Yeah, I'm just gonna quickly so, write down. So as Ashish is writing it down, right? The idea is you got to understand that when we say we got you covered, it's not about we will Lots give you there. question solutions. It's not about we will bombard you with more and more content. We will give you the right tools that you can use and grow yourself as a stronger learner. Okay. And keep in mind, exams are best taken when you're hale and healthy. So make sure that you eat proper, sleep proper, do your exercise and fitness and all that. Not just health wise, but also mental health wise. Okay, it's not just physical health wise. Study, but don't overburden yourself. Remember, some of you in that last physics question, you were saying you were confused, you're confused, you're confused. Remember, some of you, you're still thinking about the sun and the moon and the light and the colors. Good. These are curious questions. These curious questions will always help. But make a note of them, and after your session, start googling. Start going through by just the learning app and start figuring these answers out for yourself. Do not get distracted. And most importantly, know your schedule. Know that you have actually learned everything. It's a very easy cakewalk. Provided you are calm, confident, and have already fallen in love with learning. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, again, Ashwin is amazing and he's bought us a lot of me, bought me a lot of time to write this down slowly for you cbsc.gov.in this is the actual site okay this is not a scam thing we have ads and stuff this is the actual site cbsc.gov.in slash news no wait no this new site naya naya site slash reg2021.html this is an r so be careful about that write it down we can hold the slide for maybe a minute after the thing gets done uh hey yeah i like white too thanks uh yeah this is all we had for you a bit of last minute thing because hey while we're doing the session the admit card came out and you were asking about it so yeah there you go uh, hey, do you want to summarize a couple of the exam tips that we spoke about? Oh yeah, as well? oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we should do that. Sure. Here you go. So before the exam day, Ankita, so please let them know what is the best practice. <laughs> so we are actually learning, and we learn throughout the year. You have your term one. Just be there with it. Don't actually look for new topics. You can, but yeah, it might confuse you. So you know your strong areas, right? So go through them again and again. Clear all all your concepts, but don't look for the new topics at the end moment. Then comes a very important point about revised notes. I think most of us make notes. What about you guys? I make. <laughs> yeah, the other side because ulta dikh rahi hai. What about you guys? So I used to make notes and I I, I'll notes. use those all highlighters and all. It actually helps. Yeah, yeah. I make mind maps, use colors, because trust me, no matter what books, no matter what videos that you use, right? The notes that you make give you a sense of connection with the things that you're learning. I'll let you in on a bit of an insight. He makes the best notes in meetings, you know. He makes the best diagrams. It's fun to attend his meetings because he has these things. We'll show you that sometime maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he makes very nice notes. Good. Yeah. Yes. Now, of wait, course. Wait, that does not mean go start making your notes now. Okay, we're talking yeah, about revising so your so notes that you've already made. So okay? low, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then of course, as Ashwin said, I've already said, be relaxed, cool and eat well. Keep yourself healthy. It will be helping you. Mind and of course. And of course. Sleep. Sleep is really very important. And I think during the exam time, I can understand definitely will feel like just, you know, winters are here. You'll be like, just five more minutes. But yeah, have that. It's yeah, yeah, really very needed. Don't sleep during your exam. Yeah, yeah, before that's, your exam. That's <laughs> true story has happened in college. Please don't sleep during the exam. <laughs> sleep well before. Yeah. Yes. Then comes an important point about your OMR sheet, which is, I think, all of us are kind of worried, kind and of scared. By the way, there are some guidelines that have been released out for the OMRs yeah. in which you're going to be answering your questions, right? You, rather than doing it now, why don't we post a video up later? Yeah, we'll do that. Telling I think. them how best you this can has been a long make time. sure that you you've been here mistakes. with us almost an hour and a half. <laughs> this is a short punch video. They're doing up. They're clear. It's not not very complicated. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And of course, this is really very important. Ashwin sir and Ashish sir were telling you about this that if it's a very tough question, right? Don't spend your much time. It just carries one mark. So you can come. To later when you are done with the majority of the questions. By the way, there were a, quite a few people who said I got confused in that 
mirror and the lens problem solving right keep that to the end also chemistry mm -hmm. that question keep that kind of question which is like which has a lengthy process oh, yeah. to the end yeah yeah right yeah. Yes. i mean i did not see that lengthy thing in biology and important we all were looking at time so you have to keep an eye on the time there's a clock right there that's why i keep saying you know this we can go like hey there's a time so yeah so this is mind. important and with this we can say all the best for all your exams we have more practice questions paper coming up you can start preparing be with us and we are here for you we'll be learning together solving questions together all right you know what um some questions and doubts were asked uh, if you guys want to post those on the comments please go ahead we're going to hold um, a, a quick log of the questions that you're asking and Colored let's see if we can make a post around that to help you understand these things better and trust yourself trust your friends trust your parents trust byju's and rocket in your term one papers right? all the best we'll see you around bye bye bye